Hey everybody, one of the questions I get asked a ton is about tap tempo. Now, there's a few different ways of doing tap tempo in Logic, and there's a few different features that are like tap tempo, which do other things that you may not be expecting. But I want to just talk about this thing called tap tempo so that perhaps if this is a feature you really want to use, that you'll know how. And I also want to maybe say that this is a feature which you don't need to have. I mean, there's a bazillion ways to set your tempo inside Logic. Uh, when I'm choosing a project here, and I'm going to come through and choose an empty project. In the details section, there is a tap tempo option. This is one of the only places that has like just what you think of as a tap tempo for your project. And you can tap while listening to a song and pick however you want. And then, of course, we can always type it in as well. So this tap tempo is such a big deal. Um, for some people, they want to be able to do it just like that. What I want to do real quick is just set up my input and output. We'll leave everything else exactly the way it is. Choose a project with that tempo which is fine and that uh, that's great if you want to be able to do it that way. That's one of the only places that is exactly like that, um, where you can just click on a button in rhythm and have it do that. Now, there is another feature called tap tempo, and you'll see that in the key commands. So I'm going to type tap tempo, and it's right here. I've got this set to command space. And I hate this one. This is not a great tab tempo because I can do this. And then the very first time it says, would you like to enable tab tempo? If I click OK, it's going to change my synchronization settings so that it will do this. Um, and then it could cause issues, it says, with the sequencer to play out of sync with the previously recorded audio. This is like... It's fine. I'm going to turn it on for a second. I'm going to do tap, 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 tap. And sometimes with that particular one, I get uh, Siri to come in. But this is uh, not as straightforward as you might want it to be. And that's because if we do that, let's turn on the tempo interpreter. Okay, so once I have the tempo interpreter menu up, then I could use this. The problem is I'm tapping very fast. It's going up to 190, but now I'm tapping really slow and it's still at 190. I, this is so finicky and you can adjust this with the window of how much it's going to be outside for it to register. Uh, we can do different tempo responses. We can do max tempo, change, or tap count in. This is more useful to tweak it so that if you're doing this with, like, say, a score and you have your music all in, you set up the tempo interpreter, you set up the tempo interpreter, and you record in your tempo while you're, you know, listening to playback or watching your film and spotting it or something. Uh, I think that it's better than that, but even then. I've never gotten really easy, great results from it. Now, I'm not saying that none of you, uh, that nobody can get great results from this. I just don't think that this is one of those things that uh, you're all going to be getting great results from. It's too hard. It's not very efficient. It's not great. So what do I recommend then? Um, for the first and probably most important thing, um, I want to show you how to use ADAPT project tempo for this. And I'm going to, because I'm just starting from a default, I'm going to turn on capture recording here. Uh, that allows me to play MIDI without recording and, and be able to capture that onto the track. So for instance, um, let me just load up a piano for a second. Right? So I just played that and say, I, I like how that feels. I'm just going to capture that recording. 
Let's turn on the click. So all the downbeats and stuff are wrong. Um, and that's actually not too uncommon. There's a way to do this so that you can get those a little bit better. I do find it helps to start with something that's a little bit more straightforward. So let me just play something here. Right, so that's a little bit more of like a steadier tempo. Let's capture that recording and And now because that is the tempo of those things, I'm going to quantize this so that everything lines up better. And I can put a drummer track, I can do all kinds of stuff and it's gonna match with the tempo. The other really nice thing about this is that I can keep tempo now and I can just drag tempo anywhere I want. Say I actually wanna take this up to 110. Okay, so instead of having to hit like a button, I can just play whatever I want and it will have that tempo in my project. So let's come back to adapt. Say that um, you know I'm starting on a new project here and I'm thinking I want to do something with some drums. Uh, let's do drum kit designer maybe. Right, so I just did the, those four beats right there. I can see exactly what I was doing. That's like 103 to 107. And I, you know, changed tempos as I went, um, which is fine. Uh, there's, it's closer to 103 for whatever I'm doing here. So, you know, let's just, um, let's live at 103 for this. I did a tom on the first one and a kick on the second one. Let's just quantize those two. So I'm using a drum kit just to tap out the tempo. The, the one thing you have to do is do this in an empty place. You can't already have existing things there. So for instance, if I'm on adapt here and I come back, I can't overwrite the tempo of things that are there. Um, but I can start, you know, measure five here, do this. So let's try that again. Let's do. Right. I want to go back to five. I didn't mean to hit space bar. Let's just write that in. You'll see it's 106 ish, right? So now if I want, um, I can pull this up. And that's going to copy the tempo. Let's uh, let's switch it over to keep like that. And now these ones are going to play. At that new tempo. So that's pretty cool. Um, the thing you were seeing here a second ago with adapt um, is I can take this tempo and drag it into here and it's going to overwrite the tempo that was there above. So at any point, say I'm at the end of my project and I'm like, you know what? I really need to do something. I need to make this thing a little bit more peppy. So I'm gonna play something. Right? 
So I just played something like that. I'm like, okay. Ooh, that's actually, it's doing it like halftime. So those are like 16th notes. But I'm going to pull those in. And I added a beat there. But you see the idea. I, I did this down further, pulled it back, and it adjusted the tempo. So you can really customize the tempo however you want. And when you're done, put this into keep mode so it doesn't keep on switching it around. Let's do this all at a faster tempo. And if I'm like, ooh, I like that one, or it's too slow, I just move it around. So you don't necessarily need to keep tapping the tempo. You can just adjust it at that point. Ooh, and I wish I could play that, but I cannot. It's uh, just a modern miracle. Cool. So tempo at this point becomes completely flexible and controllable. And you can do it however you want without having to worry about just tapping a tempo. You can play. Now, say you don't play the piano which I barely do, then you can always just use one key on it. Or if you have a keyboard with drum pads, you can use that. It has, just has to be a MIDI output. Or it could even be, um, let's do this with adapt, go into bar 13, command K to pull up this keyboard. Right, so I just did four notes, capture recording, and I got the tempo there, 119.9 and 118.6. However, again, we just have to do keep, and I can decide which of these I really want. Um, control is a modifier to help me fine tune this to 120. Awesome. Piece of cake with the tempo stuff. Now, I kind of went pretty fast with some of this. I hope this all makes sense. I hope that you can see that the tap tempo when you originally create your project is maybe one of the least exciting ways of doing this. And so explore this, explore which one makes the most sense for you in terms of getting the tempo you want. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that if you have a track from somebody, you're like, I want to have the exact tempo of that. Just you know, take a snippet of that song put it in one of the tracks with the adapt mode on and it will analyze the tempo and you'll have the exact tempo that they were using. So you don't even have to listen or tap. You can just import and use that tempo. So pretty cool. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this uh, look at tap tempo or really the better ways of doing tempo. And um, I'll talk to you later.